Okay, let's uh, let's dive into some of these stories. Uh, the first one is from John Kiriakou uh, in Consortium News, um, where uh, the title of the article is Congress is Overdoing It. Congress is Overdoing It. That's the article. Highly recommend uh, checking out John Kiriakou, by the way. Uh, John Kiriakou is a, a CIA whistleblower that uh, revealed uh, the, the crimes of the CIA, the shadiness behind them, and uh, he, he went to prison. Because that's what we do with whistleblowers. We send them to prison for saying, hey, you committed a crime. No, no, you did by saying something. Put him in prison. And then everybody goes, yeah, that guy was bad because he said, because he said somebody committed a crime when they were committing a crime. Snitches get stitches. Snitches get stitches. Uh, but that's, uh, so John Kiriakou has a lot of experience with um, with uh, a foreign policy and, and uh, uh, the intelligence community. So I trust his word on on that sort of stuff. But he writes um, he writes about the do nothing Congress, right? Like everybody's kind of heard that term, the do nothing Congress. Oh, they don't do anything, and, and especially with with Mitch McConnell in place, he's he's sort of the bill killer. Any any bill that goes into uh, into the Senate will uh, will just disappear, especially if it has anything to do with uh, caring. Uh, just <laughs> if you care about things, then uh, then Mitch McConnell's like, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill that one. Uh, I'm gonna show you how little I care about caring by killing the thing about caring, because I'm I'm all. Do you have a bill about killing things though? Because that I'll pass. I won't kill. I won't kill the killing bill, but I won't. I won't care about the caring bill. That's how Mitch McConnell operates. Uh, but uh, this notion of the do nothing Congress is uh, is actually pretty false, uh, because uh, John Kiriakou reports that uh, they are uh, passing legislation to criminalize things that weren't criminal before because we're running out of reasons to put people in prison right like like marijuana uh, the the whole culture and um the whole background behind it the whole stigma surrounding it all of that on 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 the level of of people is uh starting to change like people don't give a shit anymore like at one point you, you know like the dare program is basically done so uh everybody else was like boy that nancy reagan sure was crazy huh like nobody cares about uh, about marijuana, um, so you know what they do care about is figuring out how to prop the prison industrial complex by making new laws to put people in, put innocent people in prison for nonviolent offenses. So let's just make up a bunch of crazy laws um, and uh, and embolden our police departments and law enforcement across the country to protect uh, cor- corporate interests rather than uh, rather than actual people. Right? Like protect and serve is not meant uh, as a uh, tagline for the people it's meant for a tagline for the rich elites so in the last uh in the past decade we have 50 new crimes 50 new crimes uh some of them uh include uh you can't serve runny ketchup in some states this seems like a pittsburgh law this seems very much like a pittsburgh-based law that city loves its heinz ketchup uh, and if you serve, one, if you serve anything else, uh, they might have publicly execute you for serving like hunts, you know, like don't like in Pittsburgh, it's Heinz or nothing. It's a very, I mean, that's like, it might as well be a law, but this does sound like it's, it's a Pittsburgh law pushed by like the Heinz lobby. That's who pushed it out there. Uh, the other one is, uh, you can make, uh, another one, uh, make an obscene gesture at a horse. Uh, okay, a couple problems with this one. Define obscene, right? Like, like is it obscene in terms of human rules, or, or at like in like horse rules, right? And like, what do horses find obscene? You know, I think it's pretty. I, I think horses would probably find it obscene that we ride on them. That's that's probably something where horses are like, you guys are fucking on our backs the whole time. This is fucked up. 
Like, that's pretty obscene, right? And how do we know that the horse finds these things obscene? We don't, where are the horse whispers? Where's Richard Gere? Or is the government hiring Richard Gere to go whisper to these horses and try to figure out if they find certain gestures obscene? It's ridiculous. This one's kind of funny. Uh, removing llama excrement from quarantine. That would make sense, right? You don't want to... If you're going to quarantine an animal's poop, you should probably leave it alone. Just leave it alone. I, actually, let's just make that a rule for everybody. Like, if you just find somebody's poop quarantined, don't don't try to move it anywhere. Just leave it. Just leave it be. It's not your poop to move. You know, that's a personal property situation. Uh, that's not your poop. Don't do something with it. But also, like, don't just leave your poop in in places either. Just be responsible with your poop. I shouldn't have to say that sentence, but I have to say that sentence. So, uh, John Kiriakou keeps going in this in in his in his uh, piece here, uh, and. One of the things he brings up is that you can be prosecuted without any criminal intent, right? And this is basically like saying that you're guilty before you're proven innocent. Um, like, they can basically say, like, well, you, you, you wanted to move that llama poop. Let's just like, oh, no, I just saw it. I didn't, I didn't even know that it was llama poop. I didn't even know that it was from a llama. I just, I just saw poop, and I was like, oh, this is kind of weird. And it's like, oh, you could have moved it, you know, and then now you're being charged for something. Uh, that you that you did that you didn't you didn't want to move the llama poop. You were you were gonna be you were gonna do what you should do with poop and just leave it uh, alone. Just let it just you know or wa- or or like I don't know put it flush it. Just flush it. That's the other point. If you flushed it, does that count as removing it from a quarantine? A lot of questions with these weird laws. A lot of questions. Now, uh, th- this idea of uh, of being prosecuted without criminal intent, intent um, is really pushed by uh, aggressive young prosecutors, uh, whose main goal is to try to get wins and uh, and get promoted. That's that's really all they want. Uh, so so they just need to they need to use that criminal intent to push it to trial so that they can uh, they can win and get promoted within their thing. And this is like, I feel like it's sort of the inverse of like you, the you can't handle the truth thing from uh, a few good men, right? Like when, when Tom Cruise is a lawyer, is looking at Jack Nicholson, who's on the stand, and he's like, you can't handle the truth. You know, this is like the other way around where uh, I feel like it's it's us in the stands, and we're looking out at the lawyer who's like, he wanted to move the poop, and you're like, no, no. Or wait, no, it is exactly the way. I'm just remembering this movie. I haven't had enough coffee today, you guys. It's exactly the way that it would be in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with, like, less yelling, though. Like, I feel like they got very yelly in that movie. You know, Tom Cruise was like, I want the truth! Jack Nicholson's like, you can't handle the truth! You know? It would be, like, less yelly. It would just be like, I feel like you can't handle the truth. Because the truth is, I didn't want to touch the poop. I'm not a poop guy. And that, and they can't, they can't deal with it. They're just like, ah, I gotta win. Freaking out. What a fucking competitive, weird uh, way to to go about the, uh, uh, the, the the world of legislation. Um. John Kiriakou points out. Uh, that what we need uh, are laws that go after real crimes. Child pornography, human trafficking, police brutality, 
Uh, I'm going to add more profiteering to that and corporate frauds as well to that. Um, I think those are some crimes we should uh, we should start looking at, you know. Um, but uh, so so he kind of itemizes a couple of instances where where people have uh, done this, you know, uh, without intent of criminality behind it sort of stuff. In 2013, for example, uh, the Coast Guard they have an investigative team. Uh, well, I always forget like the Coast Guard is part of the military. Um, like I would, and then like so it, it just obscurely pops up in something. And I'm like, oh yeah, they're a thing. That's happening. Cool. Way to guard the coast, you guys. You guys are you guys are killing it. You guys are doing such a good job that of of guarding the coast that we've just literally never heard of you doing anything because our coast is guarded so well that nobody wants to fuck with it. Pretty cool, Coast Guard. Pretty cool. Uh, but they, um, they, they took a, a, a Washington Times journalist's notes because they were looking for a, a potato gun, uh, and they basically said they can take the notes because it, quote unquote, might have had some classified information in there or something. Uh, but she acquired all of that information through the uh, Freedom of Information Act. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, they didn't find a potato gun. They didn't find anything. They were just kind of, they, they were just like, oh, the potato gun's in here. And then they found the notes and it's just like, oh, that's weird. You guys found this, these notes about things that the Coast Guard's doing? That's weird. That's interesting. And really, I mean, if you're going to make a potato gun illegal, right, this is just going into this massive trend that we have of criminalizing plants. It is. Fucking weed, potatoes. What's next? Carrots? Lettuce? I mean, every every couple of years, every couple of months, not even years, I feel like every, at least twice a year, there's a thing where it's like, don't eat the lettuce! Don't eat the... It's going to kill you. The lettuce is going to murder you and your families. Don't eat it. (laughs) Because there's like some bacterial thing in the lettuce. So now they're just like, we're going to just make plants, a bunch of them illegal. You got to eat potatoes. The only way potatoes are legal now is if you're going to mash them or make them into freedom fries. You can't even be French. It's got to be the freedom variety. Okay? And just salt. None of this garlic, Asiago, Parmesan. Okay? And you dip it in nice, consistent consistency of ketchup. If it's runny, oh my God. That is 10 to 15 years for possession of vegetables and also... Runny ketchup. There's another case where um, environmentalists uh, they they dropped glitter from like unrolling a banner, right? Because that's that's what you, you know you gotta you gotta put a little little sparkle in your in your uh, activism every once in a while. You know you gotta you gotta make your uh, make your make your protest signs to shine. You really catch the eye. If you're really telling people that. You know, Obama also fucked over the environment. You gotta, you know, you gotta get the get people's attention and shiny, sparkly things. That helps. So, I don't blame them for having glitter, but it fell. It fell out of their uh, out of their banner as they were unrolling it, um, and uh, and it was deemed like cops got called, and it was deemed potentially hazardous substance. Yeah, sure. If it if it comes off of a stripper, like this isn't. It's a, it's a protest banner, bro. Like it's fucking. They called it a terror hoax. Uh, once again, you know, proving once and for all that we continually just create our own terror. Like the glitter. Oh God, it's a glitter. The terror we got. We're unsafe. 
Like it, I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be on you for a little while. Like. They're just they're 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 just making it up. It's like you called it a hoax because I don't do you not understand glitter or drugs? <laughs> like if you thought that it was kind of like a scary drug or something like As cops have you seen drugs? <laughs> I feel like if you haven't, then I don't know if you should be cops if you can't recognize drugs or like things that terrorists do. Because you know what terrorists don't do? Use glitter in a gleeful manner. Like they're not, they're not doing that. Like I don't remember any terror group that was trying to use glitter in a very excited manner. It's not a thing that... I don't think there's ever been a terror group that's ever used fucking glitter. So... Maybe you're just not good at your jobs. <laughs> Alright, move on. Another, uh, another instance, uh, there was an Alaska man charged for uh, disor- disorderly conduct... For saying something mean about uh, the Alaska uh, Police Department in, on social media, uh, I believe they claimed that it, it hurt their feelings. Oh, all of a sudden they have feelings now. All of a sudden they're acknowledging feelings. Fucking kill an innocent black kid and the family is in tears and, you know kill an unarmed unarmed child, kill an unarmed man or woman, and the family is distraught over all of it, and you make fun of their feelings, you, you know, you, and all of a sudden now it's like, well, you can't hurt ours, ours are fragile, you guys are stronger about it, our hyper-masculine ego is small and Frails, so you can't say anything because the rules are different about frailty. No, shut the fuck up. People are gonna be mean to you if you're gonna be a dumb dick. Like that's what's gonna happen. Your your institution is is creating problems for itself. So, if we really think about it, if if rules like this, where somebody says something that is considered mean or considered like somebody's feelings are hurt uh, about the about a specific topic uh, or or a comment they made about you know uh, a institution, how far will the empire go? If somebody says something about the empire uh, in a, a, a little bit of a snarky manner. Uh, are they are they going to come after us? I mean, this is this seems like this is a way for the empire to stop dissent and critical thought, and just claim that it was disorderly conduct. You know, orderly conduct uh, is just uh, is just the authoritarian word for compliant. That's all that is. Orderly conduct means that you are compliant. So there were over 300,000 laws uh, and the Justice Department stopped counting. (laughs) They they were like, we can't count anymore. There's over 300,000. There's over 300,000. And none of these laws are like stopping the spread of empire or spreading lies about socialist leaders or American history or uh, collapsing the middle class. Just, just... Just laws about, you know, where you can and can't shovel animal poop. How's it going, everybody? Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this video, you will probably also enjoy my live stand-up comedy, and I have tour dates coming up all across the country. 
I am coming to uh, Vermont. I'm going to be doing a bunch of shows in Vermont. I'm going to be do- at the Vermont Law School, uh, Middlebury, Vermont, Burlington, Vermont, uh, Bridgewater, Vermont. Uh, I'm also coming to Rochester, New York, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, Huntsville, Alabama, Springfield, Missouri, Fayetteville, Arkansas, Springdale, Arkansas, uh, uh, Denton, Texas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Austin, Texas, and Dallas, Texas. I'm going to be touring all across the country, so if you want to check out those tour dates, grab your tickets, RSVP to these events, uh, you can do so by going to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. All of my tour dates are available there. Uh, all of the past episodes of this show, my other podcast, Taboo Table Talk and Forkful of Noodles, are available there as well uh, if you would like to check out more. Uh, and please uh, hit, the, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, uh, get your notifications uh, to get updated when I put out more videos. Uh, if you guys w- would, would like to see more videos from me, uh, obviously, uh, but, uh, but videos like this, videos that talk about issues, that talk about um, deeper topics are usually uh, not shown to as many people uh, as they would. So uh, it's uh, very dependent on you guys uh, hitting that like, hitting the subscribe, and, and sharing it if you can, uh, if you share this stuff. That would be amazing as well. Uh, thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate you guys watching this video and checking it out. And we'll uh, we'll see you on the road.